This thing, there we go. We're doing good, man. You're doing good. Sound guys don't ever get told they're doing good, but if they're doing bad, they'll know it won't. <laughs> hey, man, we're going to have a special song tonight. One more special song. In the
there in front of us. We're going to sing one song together. And then we I thought, God, I get everybody involved. I'm not going to just sit around there and not get into nothing. Let's sing uh, one of our favorite camp songs, which is page 88.
Them songs we sung about the God we serve, and songs we sung about going that way, you can't sing them going that way if you ain't saved because you ain't going that way. Amen. 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 So we're glad to be here tonight. Good to be here with all you young people. And I know we've been here with you all week. And uh, I tried to let all these other preachers preach. And uh, I didn't plan it right. Um, but here I am. Uh, you know, our process. But, uh, uh, but we've, we've had some good preaching. Amen. Amen. Our theme this week, you know what it's about, do you? Anybody? What? Finding God's will for your life. Amen. That's what our theme is for the week. Finding God's will for your life. I'll be honest with you. I've, I've asked these guys to preach. I had uh, Robert preach for, for us Monday and Phil to preach for us uh, last night. And, uh, I was trying to rook him into it again, <laughs> but uh, uh, try, I didn't try hard. Uh, I'll tell you what, the way the Lord's directed my heart, it's a really uh, unorthodox way, I guess, for the Lord to, to give me what he gave me. Um, I, and what I mean by that is sometimes we preachers, we, we sort of preach a certain way, you know, it's a certain delivery way, you know, we do. And, and then God gives us something, we're trying to fit it, which is, ain't this funny that we're preaching on the will of God and, and fitting things in. We're trying to fit God, what he's given us in the way we preach. You've know, got to do it like this, and it just don't work out that way. And so tonight, uh, it may be a little unorthodox, but without a doubt in my mind, I'm going to share with you exactly what God wants me to share with you tonight. And so we're going to be in the book of Psalms, chapter number 37. Psalms, chapter number 37. And so it was, as soon as you find Psalms 37, I would like for you to stand up. That way I know you found it. That's, and we're standing in reverence word of God. I'm just going to read a couple of verses here, and then I'm going to take off. And, uh, and so we're, we're going to let the Lord go to Psalms chapter 37. Psalms 37. I'm going to actually read you tonight a passage of Scripture that I feel like is, is, is one we that some of us know very well. Uh, but also I feel like it uh, has everything to do with the will of God. And uh, you hopefully, hopefully, you'll see what I'm talking about. And, uh, and so, Psalms 37, we're going to look down, if you will, look with me. We're going to look at, a, uh, like I said, just a couple of verses. Verse number 23, 37 23. Listen to this verse. The Bible says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Notice what it says in verse 25. I've been young and now I am now old. And yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, for his seed begging bread. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word tonight. God, thank you for singing. Thank you for the moving of the Holy Ghost. God, I want you to know tonight you're welcome here. Lord, this is this is for you. God, we love to see you do work in the lives of these young people. We love to see you do work in the lives of these adults. God, we want tonight, Lord Jesus, to step back for a few minutes and allow you to be God. Lord, I want you to help me because I know there's nothing in me, Lord. I'm scared to death. In spite of all that I do, Lord, and the skits and the uh, singing and all this stuff, Lord, standing behind this pulpit, Lord, scares me. God, I ask you tonight, Lord Jesus, to do what's needed in our hearts and lives and for every person in this building from the very youngest to the very oldest here today that they would tune their heart in to the Word of God. And Lord, hear what you have to say. And Lord, we'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. I want to share with you tonight, if I could, just a few things. You're, you've come up here to West Virginia at Elmira Baptist Youth Camp, and we're standing here, and, and uh, we've got decorations up here on the stage, which we've had every night this week, and, and this has been our theme, and this has been, as I shared with some of you already this week, this is what God put in my head, in my heart, for us to have at this youth camp this week, and uh, uh, this this puzzle, this idea, and and so uh, I, I want to tell you, as I was thinking about this, God burdened my heart uh, over the will of God for our lives. 
what God would have us to do. So many people still wandering around and grasping and wondering what God wants them to do. The truth of the matter is, uh, uh, we can know what God wants us to do. And so, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my burden tonight and my vision for this camp. And, uh, and, and I want to tonight uh, uh, share my testimony with you, if I could. I, amen. I don't do this very often, but... Uh, uh, but I, I want to do that, and uh, what I mean by that is, is this behind me is my view. My view personally is God revealed it to me of what God's will is, yeah. or what it's like, yeah. uh, trying to figure out God's will for your life. And, and uh, when I was your age, my puzzle was all over the place. Amen. Yeah. I couldn't even find all the pieces, you know. I was like, well, that's got to go together somehow. Uh, but I had a couple of edge pieces together. Uh, and them top two, I had them top two edge pieces that you see behind me. I had that part of the puzzle, but I was still scrounging around. And I'm not even going to kid you, the fact that that puzzle's white, that's the way I felt about my puzzle. There was not anything to distinguish me from the rest of it. I was just like, God, what is it you want me to do? What, is, what direction do you want me to go in my life? And, and, uh, and that's the way it is for some of you right now. Some of you teenagers that are sitting in this place right now, you've got no idea what God wants you to do, and you're sitting there and wondering, some of you young young people, uh, you're still making decisions about these edge pieces you need. And, and uh, uh, preacher would say to me, when I was growing up, they'd say things like me, hey, be in the will of God. Make sure you're in the will of God. They'd say things like this, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And, and I appreciated all that, but that didn't really give me a lot of help. Uh, and when it comes to the will of God, and, and uh, I was running around as a teenager, and I was praying, you know, what God's will was for my life. And in essence, what I was doing, I was sort of looking for that next big thing. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, we think, well, the God's, God's will for my life is pastor. Well, that's a big thing. God's will for my life is to be a missionary. That's a big thing. And so I was looking for that big thing as a kid. You know, where is it, God? What, what you want me to do, God? I hate you. Want me to teach Sunday school? Brian was talking about that today. I was looking for that big, that great old big thing. And, and uh, the problem is, as a kid, I couldn't see that far. Right. I couldn't see the big thing. I was looking for it, but God hadn't revealed that to me yet. Right. And, uh, uh, and when I was thinking about it, as I've grown, this verse that I read to you tonight speaks to me more about what the will of God is than even some of the verses that you're memorizing this week. And uh, because the will of God is not about the next big thing down the road, the will of God for your life is about the next step you take. Yeah. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. I like how it says, though we fall, he shall not be able to cast down from the Lord hold him in his hand. And David gives a little testimony. He said, I've been young, right where you're set. He said, now I'm old. He said, I'm going to tell you something about what I just told you. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed of begging and break. And so I want to tell you a few things tonight. Honestly, using my life, we're going to go from youth camp to Fayette County Park in 2022, amen? And I'm going to take you, beginning here tonight, showing you the steps that God's led me, and I'm going to take you to the altar all the way back in 1987 yeah. and show you how God directs every step we take. Yeah. I'd like to begin tonight. I've got just a few points here that I've got wrote down, and, and uh, the first thing that I want you to write down if you take notes is, is success. I want you to write down success because I'm going to tell you, and any preacher would know this, your kids may not know this, uh, some of these adults might know this, but this puzzle behind us, as confusing as it may look to you, actually is a puzzle of a successful Christian life. Yeah. Yeah. Everything, and there's still so more things that we can put together, but salvation's there, and praying's there, and Bible study's there, and witnessing's there. And the only external things are the things we ought to pray about, the things we have to pray about. And so uh, when, when we look at this puzzle, this puzzle, as God put it in my mind the way he did, represents success. So here's what I want to happen right now. I want my family, uh, my wife and my children and my grandchildren, I want you to stand up right now. All right, if you're one of my children, 
Or your my grandchildren, stand up, that's fine. I, I, I want you to look around you. This is my family. Amen. Amen. Now I'm talking, we're talking about a step, we're talking about success. I'm not talking about a completed puzzle, but I'm talking about success. Now back here at the corner, and you've seen her in the kitchen this week, is my wife for 23 years, amen? And I thank God for my wife. It was the day that uh, we were looking for that marriage piece of the puzzle, amen? And, and thank God that he did put that where he needed to be. And five kids I have here, uh, my five kids and uh, that are standing around here, and I've got uh, uh, Hannah, which has got my grandbaby, uh, and thank God for grandbabies, amen? And, and uh, I've got Madison, who's been playing the piano for me, and i got a which is preached for us this week, and I've got uh, Constance that's sung for us this week, and I've got Chloe right here. Amen. God bless my family. Can I tell you that? God has done a great thing for me. And, and uh, uh, my, one of my daughters finished college. One of them won't never leave. I don't think she keeps going. Amen. My son's about to go. Uh, my other one's, uh, God is blessed. I, I want you to understand that God has blessed my life. God, you can be seated. Thank you for standing up. And, uh, 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 that, that, uh, almost all my kids have come to me and they said, Daddy, I've been the same. Amen. Ain't that a blessing? That's success. You understand? Know uh, uh, and I know that one of these days when I step out of this world, that this world is not the only extent that I've got my kids, brother. Your daughter got saved last year. Guess what? This world is just a, the shortest period of time you have. You're going to have eternity with that daughter of yours. And, and I thank God that I've got a wife that's saved and children that are saved and, and, and all that. Uh, we've got a, a very Christian home. Not perfect, but success. Amen. And, and I want you to understand, I've been the pastor of Elmira Baptist Church for 15 years. For 15 years, God has allowed me uh, to pastor that little old church over in Duck, West Virginia, and God's place. I've been able in the last 15 years to uh, see a lot of souls saved. I've had the ability in the last 15 years to come to youth camp. And, and, and my grace is for those who've been hanging out with us at youth camp over the years, there's no dispute the fact that God has been good to us and allowed us to see things happen uh, that a lot of churches ain't ever seen happen. Yeah. Uh, and I thank God for him allowing us uh, to do that. Uh, I've got people in the church that it's not matter how big or how little our congregation is. And some of them's here tonight that well, we've had youth camp about a lot. We, we gathered the numbers we had. We went ahead and had youth camp. We went ahead and had church. We went ahead and had food pantry. We went ahead and had Christian school. We went ahead and did all these things. Our church has sent missionaries out. Our church has missionaries right out of the church uh, that are on foreign field. As I'm standing tonight before you preach it, there's pastors in this room right now uh, that come out of our church that God has blessed their life, increased their ministry, and they're pastoring right now because of the work that God done at Elmira Baptist Church. I want you to realize uh, it's got nothing to do with me, but I've seen God do a lot of things in the last 15 years, and that's success. Amen. It ain't perfect, the puzzle ain't done, but it's success. Amen. The Bible says, God, me and Brother Philip Youngblood was talking the other day about how God has allowed us to see things that we would have never seen in any other place in our lives. The Bible says, I have not seen, neither ever heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. And, and uh, I want you to understand, I, I, I've been this week, it's been a funny question, as God was dealing with me about this ministry, because I had several adults come to me this week, and they said, tell me something. How did you wind up in West Virginia? Right. Now, that's not a necessarily an easy question to answer. Right. I mean, my response is usually it was all God, and certainly that is the right response. It was all God. Uh, but uh, uh, thinking about that, and, and I'm not saying anything in right way. I'm telling you what God's done for me. I'm telling you about my puzzle. Amen? I'm telling you about the steps that I've taken in my life, that God has brought me to a place we're under some success, amen, and, and I'm thankful for that. And so the first thing I ask you to write down was success. And, and for those of you that asked me this week, how in the world did I wind up in, in West Virginia? Uh, I got here a step at a time. Yeah. Yes. Amen. amen. The next point I want you to write down is sanctification. Now we're working backwards in time, amen. I'm taking you from success Backwards, some of these steps, I'm retracing the steps for what I call the step of sanctification. And sanctification, that means set apart. Yeah. Amen? 
Now, there's many times, many times in your life where God may set you apart for something. For example, there's uh, sanctification when you get saved. He sets you apart to be a child of God. But uh, I'm not talking about that point in time right now. I'm talking about when God set me apart and called, allowed me to be a pastor. And so I was thinking about that. This is, uh, we've made it from 2022. We're back right now in early 2007. Early 2007, I was a member of Wilton Terrace Baptist Church in early two, 2007. And some of you are here. And I began to feel the Lord dealing with me uh, about going full-time in the ministry. And I had to hesitate a little bit to say full-time in the ministry because I believe ministry, wherever it is, is full-time. You understand? But what I mean by that is I believe that God began nudging my heart that he wanted me to pastor. And so, uh, uh, again, he was setting me apart for that. And, and like I said, I'm telling you how I wound up in West Virginia. And so uh, uh, what happened is uh, my church uh, down there, Woodland Terrace, we met once a week. We grew up beside of a mountain down there called Spivey Mountain. And uh, we'd walk up Spivey Mountain and, and in Asheville, and, and we had a rock over up there on the side of Spivey Mountain. And, Whatever reason that night, I was at the rock altar every week, and I carried many a rock up the side of Spivey Mountain, laid on there for burdens I may have for lost people and, and uh, uh, people that were sick and different things that I laid on that altar and we'd pray about. But this night, I grabbed me a great old big rock, and we set up that night. We didn't ride side to side up there. We parked at the bottom. We walked up that altar. And I had that big old rock, and, and I walked up that altar, and I told what God had been doing in my life, and how God had been speaking to me. And, and we got up there around that altar, and I stood there, and each one began to lay their rock on the altar and tell them about their burdens. And they said, Jeremy, what is your rock about? And I said, boys, I've got to be honest with you. I said, God wants me to pastor. I said, this rock right here I've got, God has nudged my heart to do that. I don't have nowhere to go, and I'm not leaving today. That's not what I'm doing. But I want you to know that God is setting me apart for that, and I don't know where the, uh, where the next step's coming from. I don't know where it's coming from, but I know this is the step that he wants me to take right now. And, and uh, I laid that down on the altar, didn't have nowhere to go, and, and, and all these things. But i tell you what I did. I took a step. Yes. I want to say before that, the step of sanctification is what I got down. It's another step. It's a step of service. This was 2002. 2002, we're traveling back. I'm getting younger. Yeah. Amen. 2002, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not hiding anything from you tonight. I was on the backside of throwing the towel in. Right. In 2002. And I had in 1999 decided that God uh, wouldn't be able to use me anymore. And that there wasn't no good God could ever get out of my life. And that I blowed every chance I ever had of God using somebody like me. Right. And I sat over there and me and my wife and Hannah was just a baby at the time. And I threw him in the towel. And I'd been sitting there in Moldy Grubs about two and a half years at that point in time in my life. But in 2002... My sister wouldn't leave me alone about coming to church. She said, you need to come back to church. She said, I ain't interested in it. I'm all right. Everything's good. I've been hurt at church. My heart been broke. I'm telling you the truth. This is what I'm saying. I said, I ain't going back. Well, finally, I said, all right, I'll go over there. And so she invited me over to Woodland Terrace Baptist Church. And me and my wife and my little baby at the time, you know, and we went over there to Woodland Church Baptist Church, and I said, I'll tell you one thing right now. I'll go to church over here, and I'll listen, and I'll sit back there in the back, but I ain't doing anything. I'm not getting in here. I'm, not, I'm just coming to listen, and I'm going to the house. And I'm not getting involved with nothing here. I'm not getting involved with the people here. I'm not going to go in deep here. I'm just going to come and going to listen to preaching because that's what God expects out of me, and, and that'll be fine with me because I felt like God was done with me. So I did that. I walked into Woodland Terrace Baptist Church, me and my wife and my little girl. And I climbed back there on that third pew, Woodland Terrace Baptist Church, and I said, here I am. I, I said, I ain't doing nothing. I said, you preach, preacher. God, you bless me if you can. I, I, this is all I'm going to do. But out of nowhere, the very God of heaven said, oh boy, I ain't done with you yet. Amen. 
Amen. I sat on that pew right there, and the hand of God was heavy upon me. And he said, let me tell you something. He reached down in that pew, and I didn't want no part of that church. I didn't want to get involved. But God grabbed me up by the collar and drug me out of that pew and slid me out in the middle. I, 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 was, I was going to just stand up and testify, sit down and say, no, God drug me out there. I began confessing things. I, I didn't even know I was going to confess. Amen. I'm not going to tell them people God called me to preach because I didn't want to preach. But God let that out of the bag right then and there. And all of a sudden here, I'm dumping my heart out, pouring my heart out. And God said, you ain't done yet. Amen. So you know what I did? I said, all right. I ain't done yet. I'll tell you what I'll do. If you're even let me sit there and do nothing, I'm going to do everything I can. Right. Amen. And so I said, what can I do? Next thing I know, I wound up. Me and my wife was the youth director. I was the choir director. I was a Sunday school teacher. I was in charge of uh, the community that was taking care of the pastor. I sat on that pew every time that man of God got up there. And I didn't care how dead the rest of the church was. I, I backed that man of God. I, I said, you preach, preacher. Amen. And I began to get in there. And I began to serve. You said, why did that come about? I just took a step. Right. I just took a step. Amen. You know what happened before I took that step? It was a few years earlier. 1994. Some of you don't even know when that was. Right. I was 16 years old. Had the world by the tail. You know? Yeah. Amen. I was in church. I, went, I, well, I was a pretty good kid. I went to Christian school and, and all that thing. It's 94. 1994, I, I, was, I was trying to serve God and this was, at this point in time, God had been getting dealing with my heart about preaching all together. We're working back, what you see. And I'd ask some preachers, I'd go to Brother David, and I'd say, hey, how, how do you know you was called to preach? You know questions you ask when you're wondering? And they would always give me some answer that I didn't know the answer to. Yeah. Well, if, if, you, if you get out of it, go ahead. I'm like, well, that ain't what I want to hear from you. <laughs> I'm telling you, I think I might be preaching. You're telling me if I can get out of it, go ahead. So I said, fine, that's all right. I, I, I'm going to get out of it then. If that's what you think about it, that's what you've done, realize something. If you get out of it, you ain't been called in the first place. Right. Amen. And, and, and I, I want to tell you something. I, 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 was, I was asking. I hadn't done anything. I was just curious. How do you know? How do you know what God wants you to do? How do you, uh, how do you go about this? How do you know uh, that you're making the right decision and all that stuff? And so uh, I was there, like I said, have a driver's license. I decided there's a, a singing group back in that day and called the Melody Trio. And, and uh, they sung a song I liked so much to thank him for was the name of it. And, and they were singing down in South Carolina. And I, I loaded up my Volvo. It was a pretty nice car. Down the road I went in it, down to South Carolina to listen to singing. And, and I said, that's fine. We'll just go listen to some good singing. And I said, there on church pew and God moved through that place. And, and it began to start around there. I was in a church I'd never been in for my life. I sat on that front pew and God nudged me. And from that front pew I made a step. And I walked up there in front of that church and that preacher said, young man, what do you need? I said, preacher, I said, God has called me to preach. I said, I can't wait another minute. I, I've got to stand up and make it home. Uh, amen. God has called me to preach. Amen. I, I got up there, Scott. I, I told God, use me wherever you can. I I jumped back in the car. I drove back up to Asheville, North Carolina. And we got there late that night. It's dark. And I walked in the house. And it's pitch black dark in that house. And I walked in there. And I looked in the living room. My mom was sitting there in the dark. And I said, what are you doing? She said, what are you doing? I said, God called me to preach tonight, Mama. She said, I know what I've been sitting here praying for you all night. Hey, <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm telling you about some steps. Amen. And I got in there and went to the church with my pastor, with Steve Ryan, hung over Mount Sheba Baptist Church, and blew up. I said, Preacher, I said, God called me to preach. Amen. And he says, Is that right? And I said, Yeah, it's right. And he said, You got next Sunday morning. Yeah. I got up there Sunday morning for about 10 minutes and I left the hammer down. Amen. I didn't know what I was saying. I didn't know nothing about it. Amen. I was just up there saying about 10 minutes, but can I tell you something? I ain't quit since. Amen. There's been a fire burning in my bones ever since. Amen. Since that day God called me. Amen. There's been times the devil was trying to see me and throw it in the tile and say, 
Amen. Hey, but can I tell you something? Amen. God has been faithful to me. Amen. And all it took was just a step. Amen. Amen. That's what we call a step of surrender. Amen. I'll take you to another step here. This was a step I made in 1986. 1986, on Thursday night, I was member Mount Sheba Baptist Church. Steve Reinhardt had Estes Purple in there from Mississippi. Estes come in there, and I don't know if you know Estes or not. He's a tall, slender man, wearing a little uh, cat eye glasses. You know what I mean? Just old fashioned, you know? Come in there, and you don't look like he ought to be preaching a funeral instead of a revival. <laughs> He got up that night and he preached. He had a he had a grim reaper standing on the stage right there. Death. He preached a message of just almost what you heard last night, there were people on death. How death was coming. Listen, it's appointed on the man wants to die. I want to tell you, I don't care how old or how young you are, you hey, death is on your table. Amen. It's only by the grace of God that you won't die tonight. Amen. It's only by the grace of God. But let me tell you something. I, I, I was at revival and I was sitting down there and that man preached on death. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. I, at that point in time, I was nine years old. I was scared to death. Amen. He said, hey, you understand this preacher's up there preaching. I'm sitting there listening to this man talk about death. He got a little uh, example of him standing on the stage. I'm sitting there, I'm holding on that pew just tight as I can hold on to the pew. Amen. I, 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 I sat there and said, boy, if I don't get saved, I'm going to die and go to hell. Right? I, I, I got just a little boy, but uh, eternity seems so long and hell seems so hot. Uh, death seems so permanent. I, I said, I can't wait, boy. As soon as that old preacher got done, and he said, I stand to your feet. I, I said, hey, I, I need you to get out of my way. And I took a step. Yeah. This was my first step. Yeah. I made my way up that old-fashioned over at Mount Sheba Baptist Church. And I knelt down there, and Steve Reinhardt come alongside me. He opened his Bible, and he led me down the Romans Road. Told me how I could be saved. God saved me that night. That's where I got them edge pieces I started with. Right. Yeah. I didn't have a whole puzzle until then. Yeah. But can I tell you something? That preacher led me through the Romans Road and he showed me all that stuff. But you want me to tell you the truth about when I really got saved? I got saved when I took that step. Right. right. Sir. Amen. Amen. God blesses every step. Yeah. If you want to be in the will of God tonight, I'm not asking you all tonight about college. Maybe that's something for some of you. I'm not asking all of you tonight about marriage. All I'm asking you is will you take a step? Right. Yeah. Will you take a step? The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Hey Amen. If you want to be in the will of God ten years from now, you're going to have to make the right steps tonight. Yes. You're going to have to step out from where you are, and you're going to have to say, God, I don't know what you got for me ten miles down the road. I don't know what's at the next exit. But Lord, at this mile marker here, I just want to take another step. And I want to take another step. And if you let God direct your step and keep making those steps, by the time you get to that exit ramp, you know which one to get off of. Would you take a step? I can say, like David said tonight, I've been young, I'm older, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Amen. Amen. Or his seed begging bread. And some of y'all tonight need to make a decision. Yes. Tonight, whatever it may be, that you're going to make the step. Yeah. That you're going to come out of your seat and say, I'm just taking my first step. Yeah. Tomorrow there'll be another one, but you'll take it too. But tonight, you need to take a step. Let's stand over here. It's about my eyes closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. The way looking around for my invitation song, just, just, just being sensitive to God. Is there anybody here tonight? Anybody here tonight? Here's what I'm asking. As far as your walk with God goes, and you've been in the will of God tonight, would you make
make a step tonight. Would you step out and make your way to this altar and say, God, I've got to do something tonight. I've got to do something tonight. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. Would you go ahead and come this way? Some's already coming. Let me ask you tonight, would it be anybody here tonight and say, Preacher, I've never been saved. I never took that step of salvation. If I die right now, I don't know that heaven's my home. Preacher, if I die right now, I don't know where I'm going to wind up. I'd like for you to pray for me. Would you raise your hand and not say, Preacher, it's my promise y'all won't embarrass you. I ain't embarrassed to anybody this week, but would you raise your hand and say, Preacher, I just ain't sure I'm saved. Slide your hand up and down. Let me see it. Be honest with God tonight. I see you, young man. Thank you for your honesty. Somebody else, be honest. I've not made that step. Raise your hand. I want to see it. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you. Somebody else. Somebody else. I see your hand. Thank you, honey. Somebody else. I'm just making sure I'm safe. I'm going to make a step. Can I tell you something tonight? If you're lost and you don't know you're saved, you can make that step tonight. You can leave from where you are. You come down this altar. I have somebody show you the Bible how to be saved. Would you do that? Would you come right now? If you raised your hands that I'm not sure I'm saved, would you come? Come on. There you go. That's all right. You make your way up. Now. If you're not saved, come on. Make that step. I'll have somebody with you. Come right up here to me. You go. I'll pray right alongside of you. Come on. Don't put it off. If you need to be saved, if you don't know you're going to go to heaven when you die, would you come? Would you come? God wants to save you. God loves you. God wants to do a work in your heart. You just got to make, you got to take the step. You can talk to some of you others here tonight that God are saved. Or you say, y'all, can I ask you how to walk with God? Can I ask you if you're where you need to be with God? Can I ask you if your life is in the middle of God? Because if it's not, can I, can I compare you? Young man, can I compare you to take a step? Young lady, would you take a step tonight and just say, God, I'm just making this step. I want you to begin to show me what you're going to do with my life. I'm tired of squandering away. I want to make a step. Would you come? Minnie's in the altar already. I'll tell you some people will be up here by yourself. Many of you all right there. If you need somebody to pray with you when you're in this altar, if you just raise your hand, I'll have somebody come alongside of you. If you need somebody to help you, if you need somebody to show you something to buy, there's somebody to pray with you. Just raise your hand. I'll make sure somebody comes alongside of you. Many of you come tonight because they decided tonight they'd take the step. I made my first step in 1986 on Thursday night. This is 2022 on Wednesday night. And some of y'all can make your first step tonight. Are you saved? Some of you this morning, you looked me in the eye and you said, Preacher, I'm not saved. You said, if I die right now, I don't know if I go to heaven. Would you like to be saved tonight? All you gotta do is make a step. I can't make it for you more. If I can make it for you, I would. Can I say something to you adults in the back? You're still taking steps. Just because God always gave us a brief time of, in our life of success don't mean the puzzle's done. It's a big old puzzle. Decisions we gotta make every day. You may be dealing with something in your life right now, decisions you've got to make, things you'll pray about, you don't know. But hey, don't just stand there and put this off on the kids and say, this is the kids, this is for the kids, this is for you. Some of you back there, I don't know. So maybe some back there tonight and say, preacher, I ain't never been saved. I never took the first step. Would you take it as an adult? Would you take that step? As a young person, would you take the step? Come on. There's people up here already praying. Come on. God is working in hearts tonight. Listen, we're not going to rush what God's doing in this altar tonight. You kids do exactly what you need to do. 
You know what? 